Hello and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and to part six of building the colliery. And um, what we're looking at the moment is St. Hilda's Church. Um, the chapel itself goes back to 647 AD. So you're probably wondering why we're filming the church and you're supposed to be building the colliery. Well, it does have a bearing on the colliery. So, let's go back to the colliery. Okay, so you've probably guessed it now. It's um, St Hilda's. Um, before that, it was just known as the church pit. Because it, it's only a stone throw away from the actual St Hilda's church. So, yes, it was opened in 1810. Um, just as the shaft and the winding house was added in 1825 uh, a pair of brothers um, Robert and John William Branding um, co-owned the pit until the 1860s when Harden Colliery um, co took over um, it had a very short lifespan it lasted until the 1940s it had a mixed history um, so let's just talk a little bit more about the history okay on the 28th of june 1839 there was a major disaster at the pit um, where 51 people lost their lives um, it's the biggest disaster they had at the pit um, but over its lifespan 132 people lost their lives working at this pit um, they were mainly extracting coal and some gas as well actually came from this pit and 19, in 1940 the pit was closed Okay, I'm just going to show you a video slide of um, some of the photographs I have found um, of St. Hilda's Colliery. And that's what it looks like now as, as the memorial. And that's going back to the 1800s. And that's the St. Hilda's very famous. Um, band um, which actually had records out in the 1920s and 30s Right, I think we should get back to our colliery. Okay, you're probably wondering, um, what's he doing back at the bench? I thought they were finished. Well, they're, they're not 100% finished. Um, we've got card lines where we've actually glued the card together uh, in various places, uh, especially in the doorways and the windows on the pit and whatever you saw. I've got to get rid of those before I start um, even contemplating weathering. So I'm going to mix up... Um, there's two ways of doing this. There's, um, you can get a red fill tip pen, a very fine red tip pen, and just go down the insides of the card to hide the white card. Or you can do it the old fashioned way um, with a little bit of red paint and the finest brush you've probably got. So I'm going to use the finest brush I've ever got uh, and it's only got about four to five hairs on it but that's just what I use for touching up the card. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of red and a little bit of white to get the, the tone and maybe chuck in a tiny tiny bit of black so you've got to I think you have to try and balance the paint with the, with the card and get as best you can so 
this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix the paint up and then. Right, I think I've got the colour I'm looking for. I had to add a tiny bit more red and a bit yellow just to get the brownie look. So that'll do nicely, I think. So we shall do start here first. Just to run a line down there. Because card is so absorbent, it just takes it away. And I just give it a little wipe with a cotton bud just to take the excess off. And it sort of blends in nicely. Okay, I've finished touching up all the white bits um, of the card. Um, when we trim it and um, cut the card it always leaves a white edge so I've managed to do all the white edges and even more so around the windows there and the doors so all that's done um, I had a question from a youtuber about the lead flashing um, how I made it so I'm just going to give you a quick tip here all it is is a piece of paper um, four mil in diameter, just cut into strips. Fold it in half, so you create a V-shape, and you press the V-shape into the crevice. You put a bit of glue on the back, of course, and then press it into the crevice, and dab it out for, um, with a butt edge of a. And then just press it home, and then just leave it to dry. And when it's dry, you paint it a matte silver. And Ah, you've just caught me putting the finishing touches to the actual name on the chimney. Um, yes, that's what I've done. I've stuck the name on the chimney. Um, that was a, a suggestion from two fellow YouTubers, um, Les and Richard Swallow, who commented about the chimney uh, about two videos ago, um, putting a suggestion of the actual name on the chimney itself so that's what I've done and uh, and it looks the bizzo I think not only did he say put the name of the colorite right on the um, chimney he said also make up a mini Fred Dimner so I have found this uh, motorcyclist uh, in my spares box. Uh, I've cut his arm off and turned it uh, 45 degrees and glued it back on again. And I've also made a little tiny paintbrush in his hand. I don't know if you can just make that out. He's got a little tiny paintbrush in his hand. So I'll have to repaint this figure um, to make him look a bit more like Fred Dibner. Uh, okay, um, he's headless at the moment um, because this figure had a motorcycle helmet on it. So I've deformed a, another figure. I've chopped the head off of this figure because he's wearing a flat cap. I don't know if he can... Just let me... These things are so tiny. As you can see, he's wearing a flat cap. So I'm going to try and glue this head onto this body now. And hopefully it will stick. Okay, I managed to get the head to stay put. Uh, I'm just going to give it a chance to dry. Um, as you can see, he's got a berry on, but it's almost a flat cap. So I'll probably get away with that. Um, it's a bit funny that I chopped the head off one to fit onto the other. But, yep, I'll give that a chance to dry. Okay, while we're waiting for the glue to go off on the figure, I thought I'd uh, start making some drain pipes to go onto the building next. Um, just using solder wire, um, one millimetre diameter solder wire, bent to shape, to go in between the apexes of the roof. 
where the lug flashing is. Okay, that's the uh, drain pipe in place. Once the glue's dry, I'll paint it the same colour as this architrave here. I'll paint it blue. And uh, that, that should look effective. So that's one drain pipe done. I found this uh, white fencing in my camera handy box. And I've just cut off one of these strips here, which isn't going to be used. So I'm going to use that for the um, guttering. And I've stuck one on. And it fits there nicely, and it's got that curved edge, so it, from a distance it would look like guttering. So I'm going to put a piece on this side, and a piece on this side, and run two drain pipes down. And, uh, and that would finish that off nicely. Okay, as you can see, the drain pipes have now been added, so all I have to do is paint them. So we've got one there one there and one around the other side there so we'll just let them dry because the, the Yoohoo glue takes an edge to dry and then we can get them painted okay getting back to our little character Fred uh, the head is now permanently glued to the body It's it's gone off I've made a little tiny bucket um, with a handle so he's holding the bucket of paint so all I've got to do now is paint this little figure uh, he's actually sitting on a plank as well I've drilled two holes in ready so I can literally suspend him down the chimney so uh, it's just a case of um, painting him now Right, uh, as you can see I've painted the guttering um, on this um, workshop. I just want to show you a little tip while we're on the subject of guttering. Um, if you can imagine this is a piece of guttering ready to go on the building. Um, with the Yoohoo glue it's very 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 stringy and if you put a little bit of glue on If you put a little bit of glue on, you just twist it. If you twist the drain pipe and let the glue flow on, and then keep on twisting the drain pipe. See what I mean? It keeps the glue in one spot. And when it's dry, it looks like one of the brackets that actually hold the drain pipe to the wall. And here is a good example um, where the glue was twisted around the um, soldering wire uh, to make it look like the brackets that actually hold the drain pipe to the walls. Um, I have now weathered the workshop. Um, I've used a Humbro black mat, just jabbed it on and just very very lightly Put it along the base of the building as you can see with the odd streaks coming down the wall as for the roof i used a green um, humbrel wash and just dabbed it on very very lightly and wiped it off and it's soaked into all the slates as you can see and that has really come up really well let's start with the cori i'm just dipping my brush into the black mat there very very gently taking off as much paint as possible and just round the bottom of the building wiping it off as quick as you're putting it on the trick is not to put too much on
just take it off. That's it. So it's very, very faint. It starts off dark at the bottom and then a little bit faint as it goes up. Now, if you think about a, the plant room, it'll always get mucky around the handle. So I just put a little bit around there and down that edge and along the bottom. And let's take it off again. There you go. So it just creates a shadow of black. Obviously, where well, you need it a little bit darker. Only along the base there. And just wipe it off again. And that's all it is to it. Uh, I mean, card is very, very absorbent. Um, so, less is more, uh, if you know what I mean. And obviously this is an ideal opportunity to get rid of any white card that's showing through along the bottom. Right, there you go. As you can see I've made a start on the green wash um, just by brushing it in um, and I'm just leaving it but just putting it on not so heavy just enough so that the uh, just for the effect that you want um, as you can see there's streaks there and a good thing about scoring the roof it actually sinks into the scoring marks like there and really makes it grimy as you can see I've, I've stuck some in the lead flashing just in there and just left it okay the colliery building itself is now finished so all the weathering is done um, use the dark green and a little bit of black for the chimney very very lightly and the weathering has made it lifelike if you like so yeah it's turned out quite well there's only one thing left to do now so the last thing to do is to add this little figure painting one of the letters so I'm gonna to have to make some sort of a frame up at the top there so this little fella can hang down um, I've still got a little bit of paint work to do on him um, I've got to paint the bucket um, put a little bit of white paint on it uh, yeah and that'll be my little Fred Dibner Right, as you can see, I've just made and glued a little A-frame and stuck it to the chimney. There's a little tiny hole on the top there, and that's for the brass wire to come down onto the bosun's chair for the little guy to sit on. And here he is. I'm just waiting for the glue to go off on the A-frame and also on the bosun's chair. Uh, still little bits more to do to him. I uh, still haven't painted the bucket yet. Um, but he's almost there. I may give him a scarf because it may be a little bit chilly up at that height. 
And here is St Hilda's Colliery finally placed on the layout for the last time. Um, it's been a very interesting project to say the least. Uh, it's taken me over, well, five weeks in all um, to do this little project. And it's turned out, I think, quite well. I'm pleased with it. Um, just like to say thank you to all the guys uh, who have made suggestions and followed us all the way through this. Um, it's been interesting to say the least. And there is our little man, Fred Dibner, hanging off the chimney. I'd just like to say it. a big thank you to Les and Richard Swallow for making that suggestion. Um, which just gives it something else to look at, a nice little feature. Right, um, the cables are not wiring yet because I still have the yard to do, which means the buildings will be moved but only to one side and that will be another project for another day but yes it's there it's done and dusted of course um, the hardest part to make for this I think was Fred Dibner's little bucket getting that little handle onto I don't know if we can zoom in far enough to see it on just about make it out the little handle on the bucket there all that is a little bit of thread and getting that to stick on one side and with a little bit of super glue waiting for the super glue to go off and then spinning the handle around and sticking it on the other side but yeah it's done and I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody for watching and follow me on this long journey and uh, that's all from me now hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and um, bye for now bye